Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research. I am so excited you're here as we are learning how to make some circuits on breadboards. Now we have done a huge circuits thing in Tinkercad. We've done a big Tinkercad circuits tutorial um, and we are making some of those into real life circuits so you can see how they're wired up and the payoff that you get. Now in a previous breadboard circuits tutorial, we actually wired up this LCD display and we programmed it and we learned how to use this potentiometer to sort of change the look of that display. And now today we are going to add some input so that we can turn this into a score piece. And we're gonna do that through the use of some little push buttons right here. And all we need are the push buttons and some resistors and then we'll need a few bits of wire. You could either use sort of these jumper cables that we have or you could use smaller pieces of wire like this, it's up to you, whatever you think will work best for your project. These are all using the Elegoo kit and they will also work with the Arduino Uno. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to add in a button. So let's put our buttons in. Now these buttons are meant to jump this little gap that's right here. So if you are finding that you're pressing your button in and it's not going and the legs are bending, you might want to switch it 90 degrees. It should only fit across that gap in one direction, like right here. My legs can't quite get across the gap. They're too short. So if I flip it 90 degrees, then my legs can make that gap and we can bridge that gap. So you wanna make sure that you bridge that gap and then you should be able to press that button in pretty easily, just like that. And if we wanna keep score for two teams, we need two buttons. So we will add a second button in right next to it. Now we need to wire our buttons up a little bit and we are gonna put them through resistors into ground. All right, so I can take a little resistor here. These are just 100 ohm resistors. You can make it look like a staple and then you can go from one side of the button into your ground rail. We're gonna do it to the other. This is another 100 ohm resistor. We'll make it look like a little staple, just like that. And then you'll go from the side of the button, having a little trouble with my potentiometer, up into the ground rail, just like that. Now it's okay that this resistor goes in a little higher than that one because remember the columns of our breadboards are all connected. Now we are going to wire in our buttons to get some power and we do that through um, wiring them into our hot rail. So I'm gonna use a smaller piece, just a little tiny wire here, and it's gonna go from the other side of the button. So your button has two terminals. The terminals are right here. Here's one terminal. These two are actually connected. And here's another terminal that are connected. So we connected this terminal into our resistor and we're gonna connect this one into our power or hot, as we like to say. And make sure that you get to the right spot, because these buttons span three columns. So make sure that you have your resistor going in right here, and then you skip a hole, and then your power goes in to the other one. Otherwise, you won't actually be powering that guy. All right, so after we do the first one to hot, we're gonna do the second one to hot as well. So we can go from here and just gently press that in just like that. So these buttons now have power, they're going through ground, it's pretty great, but they are not actually talking to our Arduino. And that is the next piece that we'll do. And we're gonna go from, not from the ground side, but from the other side of the, our resistor. So like one dot just below, same column, that's really important, so it's also attached to the button. And this one button is gonna go into pin eight of our Arduino. So you're gonna have a little bit of gap between seven and eight. Seven should be where all of your LCD display stuff ends. So it will be the next one up on pin eight. And these LEDs have this beautiful um, silk screening on them. So you can also make sure from the side that you're getting it into the right spot. And we're gonna do the same thing with button two. And button two is gonna go into pin nine. So from this side of the resistor, underneath that resistor, or you could go up here too, but just not from the ground rail. And that will go into pin nine. And you wanna double check that that's the right pin on your Arduino. And now we are all set up 
Except for nothing is going to work when I press these buttons because we need to change the code that we have. So let's go check out the code we have in Tinkercad first. So if you haven't built this project over in Tinkercad, you are more than welcome to do that. It lets you learn your circuits without having to buy anything, which is pretty great. And you can even simulate your circuits up here and play with them and see how they work. It's really quite lovely. And we have the video on how we wire this up in Tinkercad um, in a playlist. It's our Tinkercad Circus Tutorials. And we go over how to write the code in that. Now, our code for just the LCD display was very, very short. You'll notice this is quite a bit longer. And some things that we've done here is we've added a pin mode of input. This stuff is actually gonna be used in our next video where we wire up a red, green, blue LED. But we sort of start with some initial text and then this gives us all of our things of if the button is high, then add one to their score and print their score. So if you're curious about how to write this code, make sure that you check out our Tinkercad circuits tutorial online on YouTube and our patrons at patreon.com slash Rosie research all have access to this code to copy and paste. So we're going to copy this code that we wrote over in Tinkercad and we're going to paste it over into our Arduino IDE. So here is the code that I have for writing to the LCD display that was in our most previous Tinkercad, or not Tinkercad, but breadboard circuits tutorial. And I'm going to delete all of this code and paste in the code that I have from Tinkercad. So it's a lot more code. Um, we can verify this code, make sure that it's happy, it's done compiling, it tells us how much it uses, and it basically this tells us that there's no issues with the code that we wrote. If we were to do something like, let's say, miss a semicolon, in this verify step, it will tell us, usually a little bit below where the error is, that we have an issue. And down here it says, suggested semicolon before LCD. And it's saying, we don't know what to do here. And that's because we were missing that. So that helps you figure out some of your code and what it will look like. So now we can load it up onto our board here. And you can see that it is refreshing. We have a team one and a team two. And the idea is when we press these buttons, these will change just like that. There we go. So now we have a fun little scorekeeper. And in our next breadboard circuits tutorial video, we're gonna add a red, green, blue LED to this. And we will make it, we'll add some extra things to our code where this can go off when a team wins, which will be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining us on this Breadboard Circus tutorial. We hope that you have a lot of fun. Make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash rosieresearch if you want to be able to get the code and also check out all of these fun projects that we have been building as we learn together. All right, friends, have a great one, and we'll see you soon.